Now we're going to talk about why do people say Jehovah's Witnesses are not Christians? What are some of the things that differentiate the Jehovah's Witness belief system from the belief system of biblical Christianity? I find it interesting that in the May 1st issue of the Watchtower, they actually made this statement. Compare the gospel of the kingdom done by the religious systems of Christendom during all the centuries with that done by Jehovah's Witnesses. They are not one and the same kind. They actually admitted that the gospel that they preach is different than the gospel that people of what they consider Christendom, that's all of you who's not part of the Jehovah's Witness Watchtower organization, that theirs was different. Well, you know what the scripture says about that. If we look at Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 through 8, Paul warned about those people who would preach a different gospel. He said, I am amazed that you are so quickly deserting him who called you by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, which is really not another. Only there are some who are disturbing you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even though we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to that, which we have preached to you, let him be accursed. So whenever someone comes up to me and says, you know, my gospel is different than the one that Christianity has been preaching for all these centuries, a red flag goes off. Because Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against his church in Matthew 16, 18. And the Apostle Paul warned about those who preach a different gospel. So if it's a different gospel than what Christian churches have been teaching, and Jesus said the gates of hell would not prevail against those churches, then how could the gospel have been perverted to the point that we would need a new gospel, a new revelation from God? So that's one of the things you will notice, too, with not just the Jehovah's Witnesses, but the Mormons and other religious groups make the same claim that their gospel is different than the gospel that we of Christianity have been preaching. And that's a red flag because of what we see in Scripture. Now, what are some of the differences between what Jehovah's Witnesses believe concerning the gospel or concerning their kingdom message? Well, I have up here a chart, Watchtower Doctrine versus Christian Doctrine. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the Father alone is Jehovah God, whereas Christians have historically taught the Trinity doctrine, the idea that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, three distinct persons, are one God. And they all three comprise this one true God. Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is God himself, God Almighty. They make him a second God under Jehovah God. And in so doing, they, they teach that Jesus is like not of the same level as the true God. He's just a second God out there. He's only divine. He's Michael the archangel in their system. Whereas the Bible teaches that Jesus is almighty God in Revelation. Chapter 1, verses 17 through 18, Jesus calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Jehovah God says he's the only one that is the first and last. How many first and last gods can you have? Only one, right? So if Jehovah God is one true God and you have Jesus Christ being a second God, who's, they're both claiming to be the first and last God, you've got a conflict that does not make sense. So Revelation chapter 1, verse 8, Revelation 1, 17 and 18 are good verses to show Jesus is the Jehovah God Almighty of Isaiah 44, verse 6, who says, I am the first and the last, because you can only have one first and last God. The Holy Spirit in the Watchtower theology is an impersonal force. He is not a person. He's an it in their religious beliefs. So he doesn't even constitute one of the persons of God or a second God under their system. They don't even believe in the Holy Spirit's personhood. But the Holy Spirit of the Bible is shown to be a person numerous times throughout Scripture. He's attributed attributes that belong only to a person. He's given a mind, a will, and emotions. We see Scriptures that speak 
to each of these aspects. And when you have a mind, will, and emotion, that constitutes personhood. So not only do we see the Holy Spirit is a person, but also he is called God. And we will look at that some more in some of the scriptures on that. So another difference, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that they receive spiritual truth through their organization, not through a Holy Spirit speaking and teaching individual believers as they read the Word of God. So in our beliefs as Christians, we believe we can go to the Bible, we can read it, the Holy Spirit will teach us what is true. And as we read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit gives us the ability to interpret what the Scripture is teaching us. But with Jehovah's Witnesses, only a special group of people can interpret the Bible. They call it the Watchtower Organization, their governing body. So that is one of the major issues you run into when you're sharing Scripture with Jehovah's Witnesses. Maybe you'll show them a verse that doesn't agree with something they've been taught in their doctrine. And in their mind, they're thinking, well, the Watchtower is the only one that has the authority. They're the only organization Jehovah God uses today. So if Jehovah God only uses this organization to interpret the Bible, I can't look at this verse and disagree with watch, what the Watchtower teaches me about this verse. That is what's going on in their mind. They cannot go against this organization. So that's one of the reasons later on in our study we are going to talk about, does God work through an organization? So you can undercut this fundamental hang-up that they have for understanding the Scripture for themselves. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Salvation is in their organization, according to the Watchtower, but salvation is in Jesus alone for Christians. Heaven is only for a group of 144,000 people, according to the Watchtower. But for Christians, heaven is for all believers who place their faith in Christ. For Jehovah's Witnesses, all are going to rebuild the earth to make it a paradise after Jehovah God destroys the wicked governments and the wicked people of the earth. But in the scripture, we read that the earth is going to be recreated, a new heaven and a new earth. God says he's going to destroy this present earth, this present system. It says in Second Peter chapter 3, and he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness is going to dwell. And you know, to be honest with you, to think about Armageddon destroying this entire earth, and if Jehovah God were to destroy it to the level that Jehovah's Witnesses say will occur, in Armageddon, and then Jehovah's Witnesses are responsible for rebuilding everything, that doesn't sound like heaven to me. That doesn't sound like paradise. To spend a thousand years trying to clean up the mess, and especially the bloody mess of all of the people, the wicked people being destroyed. I like the idea of God creating a brand new earth, a brand new paradise on earth, and a new heaven, as it says in Second Peter chapter 3, which is our hope, that this present earth is going to be destroyed by fire, but the new heaven will be for all believers and the new earth as well. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that the soul ceases to exist at death. So once you die, you go into everlasting nothingness unless you're deemed worthy enough to be resurrected. And those that didn't have a chance to hear the message of Jehovah's Witnesses when they die, they believe they will be resurrected during the thousand years when Jehovah's Witnesses have made the earth into a paradise. So the witnesses have to do all the work. And all these people that didn't have a chance to hear their message, then they get resurrected. And then they're going to be able to learn about Jehovah's ways and get a chance, a second chance, if you will, at being able to live on paradise earth. So it sounds like a lot of work, you know. When I think about all of this, if I was a, to consider being a Jehovah's Witness, cleaning up the earth, making it a paradise so all these people who weren't Jehovah's Witnesses didn't have a chance to hear about it, get a chance to be resurrected and given a second chance anyway. It's like, that just sounds like a lot of work, <laughs> you know? And, and you're out going door-to-door -door every weekend, every possible free minute you have. 